Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live day one at Knowledge. We're here at the Aria Hotel. This is service now. It's a big user conference. Jeff Frick and I are going to, going to, going to be going all week. Uh, this is day one. We're going tomorrow, all day. We've got a ton of customers coming on. Half day Thursday. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship product where we go into the events. We bring you the best guests that we can find. We extract the signal from the noise. Jimmy Fitzgerald is here. He's the Vice President of Global Services at ServiceNow. We love, those of you who watch this program regularly know, we love the services angle. It's where value is created. Everybody overlooks the importance of services. Jimmy, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, David. Thanks yes. for having me. You're welcome. So, so services is, um, as I say, it's this really, it's like the secret weapon of many companies. Of course, you guys are a platform that's <laughs> software as a service. So you have the services layer on top of it. I'm very interested in learning more about that. And, and you have this burgeoning ecosystem. Jeff and I were, you know, last night just walking around the, the, mm -hmm. the partner and exhibitor pavilion, talking to people, and you've got this ecosystem that's exploding. So tell us about services at ServiceNow, your professional services organization, and we'll get into it. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you for having me. And um, you must have talked to Frank, because in our last company, All Hands, he actually used those words. He said that services had now become a strategic weapon for the company. And um, I lead a, I'm fortunate enough to lead a team of about uh, 220 people at ServiceNow. And um, you know, to hear our CEO recognize services as a strategic enabler for the company is, a, is a, obviously a significant milestone. Um, so we, uh, we break it down into kind of two distinct uh, areas that we, we focus on. And um, the first is as we engage with our customers, and that's around um, time to value and amount of value. And uh, I'll speak to those maybe a little bit deeper. Um, you know, SaaS is, is, and cloud is changing the fundamentals of how enterprise software is deployed. So our whole value proposition is, you know, you buy our product or solution and you should be able to get to value in a fairly accelerated fashion relative to maybe some of the legacy vendors. Um, and I tell customers all the time, if they're not live within 90 days with some level of our functionality, they're a red account. So we have to encourage our teams as we're implementing the product, we have to push our customers to think about 90 day cycles and what they can implement in 90 days, and then they repeat. There's no end to a good implementation. A good implementation may never end, because there's always new use cases that you can bring into the platform. So acceleration around time to value is a, is a, is a really key thing for us. The second is the amount of value. And so if you think of our platform, it's got a very wide application suite. And beyond that, you've got the platform and how the platform can be leveraged for line of business. So typically customers will start a program of work around some subset of the application suite. And, and we want to accelerate that time to value. But then as a SaaS company, you know, we really want to continue to grow our footprint on that customer and make them more and more successful. So we're always looking at the amount of value. So across the application suite, are they using 40%? Are they using 90% of the application suite? And then in the platform area, how do we educate and enable the customer to start thinking about use cases that they can really leverage our platform? So that's all around how we work with customers. And you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to get excited around the ecosystem at ServiceNow because we're very fortunate to have some great partners. Right. Um, so a, a large part of our charter in the professional services organization is how do we bring quality partners like KPMG, like Cloud Sherpas, like Fruition to the ecosystem, get them to invest in training and certification and high quality deployments for their, uh, for, for their companies. And that's a key area of our focus. How do we enable an ecosystem to really be part of our extended family and represent us and our core values? So back to time to value and amount of value. When I talk to partners and they want to know how to be a good partner, for us, it's very, very simple, right? There's some necessary training and certification, but it comes back, you need to live the values of a SaaS company and of ServiceNow. And that comes back to, again, time to value. We want to know that you're doing implementations with rapid acceleration, and then that they're high value, high impact implementations for our customers delivering value. So I want to come back to those two sort of metrics that you're driving, but before we do that, so how, to help us understand how you manage the inherent conflict between what you do and what your partners do, or maybe it's not an inherent conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, where do you, where do they pick up and where do you leave off? Good question, good question. So I would like to think that there's no conflict. Uh -huh. um, um, we, uh, 
we, we, uh, we, we, we deliberately want to be focused on enabling the ecosystem and being a very uh, well-respected partner uh, as, as a company. So if a, if a partner is in a particular account or targeting a particular account, uh, we will not touch that account. Other than enabling the partner and bringing a category of uh, offerings around uh, delivery uh, assurance or delivery oversight to make sure the customer, the partner, and service now are working well together, things like doing configuration reviews or performance reviews to really enable the partner to be successful. But we, you know, the right of first refusal, the partner has brought that customer to us, or they're the trusted provider, trusted um, adv advisor, we, we will not go near those customers and we're really there in a supporting mode. Um, and then we've, we've, we've also looked at what we're good at and what we're not good at. Um, so if you think of a successful transformation or a successful outcome for a customer, um, it starts with having a great technology and that's what we bring. It also requires strategy, requires governance, it requires people, and it requires process. We refer to those collectively as the five domains of best practice. Um, and we look at, and we've worked with some of our, some of our biggest partners and really defining what is the swim lane we want to be within across those five domains of best practice and what, are the, what is the swim lane we really want our partners to bring to those, to those areas. So if I pick, and I'll pick on, a, on an example, I'll pick on one domain in the, people, in the area of people. And so if so you before you do that, so I missed them. So strategy, governance, people, process. Which one did I miss? And technology. And technology, that's right. Okay, Our that's wonderful right. world-class platform. How could I forget that? <laughs> okay, sorry, you're going to give an example on people now. Sorry to interrupt. So let's go deeper on people. So <laughs> when we talk about people, um, you know, in our swim lane, we want to provide world-class training to the technical project team, right? So how to be a successful system administrator, a successful uh, developer, a successful architect on the product. And then a second area is we want to be able to provide the necessary training to the process users and the end users of our application. So as an end user engages with the application, we want to make sure that they're properly trained on how to do incident management, problem management, change management, and that's our space. It's core to the product and it's, it's what we're good at and what we should be really setting the gold standard around quality. Um, any large transformation requires a very large focus on organizational change management. So the area of OCM, it's not core to what we do, right? It's not a competence that we have in spades. So we look at our partners as this is capability that, that you bring, right? This is what you do. When you have organizational change, um, you have possibly job changes um, in terms of people's roles changing or people's roles going away. That's not a competence that we bring to the table, and we very much rely on the partners to really work with us and bring that competence to the table. Okay, so there's a little bit of overlap there, but there's just, the good news is there's not a wide gap between your technology implementations and best practice and, and yep. what your partners are doing. You know, like I say, yep. there's some overlap, but, but it's better to, have, better to have overlap, small good, amounts of overlap good than coverage. giant good gaps, coverage. right? Good gaps, yeah. Okay, I want to come back to the time to value and the amount of value. Do your customers typically, because it's, it's kind of, the business case is, it's sort of obvious, uh, yeah. but, but when I, if I have to put it into dollars and cents, I mean certainly I could quantify you know, the cost savings and maybe the asset management, the, some of the reclamation of the underutilized assets and things like that, but the value that you bring is telephone numbers you know, on the other side, some mm -hmm. of the soft dollars. Mm -hmm. Do your customers typically go in to uh, an implementation with a really solid business case against which they can compare the results? Good question. Um, I think we have, we have, you know, there's no one customer, right? They come yeah. in different yeah. shapes and sizes as we all know. Um, some customers will, will go back to maybe the, the partner ecosystem for a moment. So I, I can think of a you know, very large pharmaceutical company where we were uh, partnering with one of the global systems integrators and they were very much in front loaded in that process where they helped that customer put the business case together for a successful IT transformation. And we're about a year and a half into that program of work and, and it's been very, very successful. And it was really around the business case that the GSI had led the customer to up front. And we have many examples like that. And in the other camp, many, many customers come to us with a toothache, right? So they have a, this, they have this, they have this, this, this tooth that needs to get removed. <laughs> Doc. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's, you know that's, a, that's a great way to get into an account because they're feeling the pain of, a, of another provider of what we do, right? So in that case, it's around 
I need to get off this other platform. It's a legacy application. I can't upgrade it. My users hate it. I'm not responsive to the business. I've got this instant sprawl happening across my organization where I don't have one version of this product. I have 100 versions of this product. So, you know, in that case, the business case is very, very simple. There's a lot of pain and there's a lot of cost. And therefore, what we're doing is really taking the TCO down and it becomes much more of a, we can get a better experience, we can go faster, and it costs less than, than what we, the incumbent we have today. That happens a lot. And, and when we do that, and we really need to focus on and when we get into the customer, we get the, the solution live, how do we make sure we, we then continue to provide more and more value going forward? Because um, customers have sharp memories. So as much as the, two, the toothache hurt, when it comes one year, two years, three doubt, years down the road, <laughs> it's not front of mind for them. So they've right. kind of forgotten about that right. and they still want to know they're receiving value from the platform. So maybe we come in more under a TCO banner, but then we, as an account management team, and as, as a team, we really need to focus on how do we evolve and grow that value over time. Yeah, so the, I mean, I see obviously, I would think time to resolution uh, for, for incidents is a big metric for your customers and it's clear that you guys can compress that. Uh, and I would also think you eliminate a lot of rework. Uh, and, and a lot of mistakes, and maybe a lot of you know, double, yep. double work. So yep. I, I think I could probably develop a business case and quantify the impact of that. Talk about how you compress that. I, I'd like to specifically understand how you accelerate that. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a good example around, uh, on the Frank's keynote today, we had a, a panel discussion at the end with, with eight customers and KPMG, mm. and um, KPMG actually is a customer, so I guess nine customers. Um, and one of the customers in there, as part of their transformation, and it was, it was, it was a multi-year transformation, they actually <coughs> doubled the customer satisfaction measure of their customers, they reduced resolution time by 50%, and they reduced the size of the help desk by 50%. And it really comes core to those three value metrics that we bring to the table, consolidation, automation, and kind of consumerization. And a, 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 we really have to work with customers. We have an offering in the, in the services organization around a health check. So we actually come into customers, whether they're going through the implementation or they're a live customer, to really understand where are you extracting the value today? Are your trends across time to resolution improving? And can they get better? And as partners, you know, what are the things that we can jointly do to further drive those trend lines in the right direction? So I think it's, it's, it really has to be part of our DNA and what we do as, as to really continue to drive further and further value into our, into our customer base. Right. So Jimmy, can you talk a little bit about as you're, as you're expanding the value delivery, as you said, after the toothache is gone and everything's coming along, kind of what's the path of that? Do you, is it taking over more and more of the, of the kind of core processes in the IT department or yep. we've heard you're starting to venture out into HR and some other functional areas. Kind of what can you tell us about how that's how it's been historically, and is there is there some change that's happening underway now? Yeah, I think there's there's certainly going to be some changes in terms of things that we can we can do maybe to continue to mature in those areas. What typically happens is the um, the uh, automation suite has many different applications: incident, problem, change, release, acid, financial, IT costing, and so on and so on. Customers typically start with a subset, and we'll work with them on what that looks like, um, and then when they're live, um, they'll begin to understand that the platform is truly a very powerful platform, and then they have still legacy apps or other use cases where it can be applied. So we'll start to go from phase to phase and, and go into other areas. Customers start in different ways with us. And I'll go back to those three value metrics at the highest level, mm -hmm. consolidation, consumerization, and automation. Some customers will start with, I've got 10 uh, legacy applications, I've got 50 help desks, my focus in year one needs to be on consolidation. consolidation. Okay. And then we'll get them live, get them successful, and then we will go back in there and go, okay, now let's talk about the automation agenda. Do you have an automation agenda? Or can we come in, spend some time with you? We call it a discovery. Go do a giant discovery with our champions in that account and really look at what are the top 10 things we can do from bringing an automation to the table and starting projects around that. Okay. Or equally consumerization. And equally, if we got into the accounts, maybe, maybe in, in many customers, they want to, they can't move the legacy applications immediately for whatever reason, political or otherwise, and they want to put a better uh, service experience in front of their customers. So they'll start with the consumerization, 
okay. and will really put service catalog up to their end users and, and really kind of be a veneer between easy to deal with IT2 and the complexity in the back end. So we'll start with consumerization, but then when we get to phase two, we'll quickly get across to how do we consolidate those legacy apps into our platform. Okay. So it really depends on where the customer's pain is on, on, on day one. And then it's usually one of those three and then you... It's always one of those three and then, and then, move, then we'll, we want to cover all three in time. Easy, that's that's exactly it. So and how we, do Go ahead. And we really look at, you know, as we look at our accounts strategically, we really need to be delivering value on all three, right? If we want to get, um, to delivering the highest level of value for our customers and being successful long term, we need to be delivering value across all of those three metrics. Right, right. So how do you capture the knowledge, what knowledge? Right? How do you capture the knowledge <laughs> of all this experience and how do you share that with your, your partners uh, in, 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 internally and externally? Yeah, um, it's, uh, that's hard, right? So, you know, if you think about the last couple of years, um, in the, it, I'll give, talk about my team specifically in the services practice, we've gone from about 50 people to over 200 people in the space of you know, 18 to 24 months. So that's a lot of growth. Wow, a lot of growth. Um, and you need to uh, get those people on board, get them trained, get them certified, and put them out there working and adding value to our customers. And we're all running, running, running very fast. And um, so we've, I'll talk, two different answers maybe to that question. One is something very simple. People want to be rewarded for when they do special work, right? So we really are, we measure our people across um, a number of things, but we actually measure them across employee growth and innovation. So we're asking them to take the time, when you do something that maybe is new and can be harnessed in other customers or other places, bring that innovation back. And once a quarter, as part of an all hands that I lead, we actually do service wow awards around innovation. So where have our employees driven a specific value and then we bring that back in? How can we package that up and then take that to the rest of the services practice and indeed the ecosystem? So that's something that we do. Um, another one is our implementation methodology is referred to as um, Start Now. And Start Now is actually our implementation methodology. It's actually built on our own product, PPM, SDLC, and Agile Scrum. So when we actually start an implementation at our customer site, on day one, the customer is receiving value from our product. It's very, very, very powerful. We launched it at Knowledge 12. Every one of our projects globally, and um, we're leading with Start Now. Um, so I'm getting some fantastic results. It accelerates time to value. We get lower variation on quality and so on. We're now taking the next step, which is taking Start Now as the implementation methodology and taking it to the ecosystem. So we're working with our um, our largest partners and, and our, our most strategic partners and really going, you know, you've got all got your own implementation methodologies. Ours around the technology implementation is world class. We're continuing to invest more and more in it. We're asking them to adopt our implementation methodology and really put their uh, IP around that from a people change or a process change perspective so that together we can be more successful. And that allows us, as we get innovation, as we get best practices, it's being built into the methodology. So whatever we find, it's quickly getting built into the methodology and everyone gets to benefit on a global basis. So over the next 12 months, it's going to be a huge area of focus is getting that out to okay, the ecosystem. Okay, I was going to say, how's that being, how's that being accepted? Uh, it's, uh, it's still pretty new, it sounds like. You know, it's, it's, it's still pretty new. I went to um, three partners initially and had this conversation with their leadership and in every one of those meetings, it's been fantastically received. It's like oh, they're excited, because they they want to bring best practice to their customers. They want to reduce variation, so they absolutely want to do it. And what's really good is they still can differentiate, because they can still put their IP around our methodology. Right. So we're allowing them to do that. And um, so far, the response has been really, 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 really good. Terrific. All right, Jimmy, well listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, we're out of time. Uh, really appreciate the services angle. As I said, we'd love that here on theCUBE at SiliconANGLE Wikibon. Uh, so thank you very much. Really. Thank you, David. Thank and, you, Jeff. Um, thank you. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with a practitioner and a ServiceNow customer from Lenox International. We'll hear about her story and how they're using ServiceNow. We'll dig into some of the challenges that they faced, how they're transforming their organization. This is theCUBE. Silicon Angles product where we bring you the best guests that we can find. We're here live at Las Vegas, the Knowledge Conference, ServiceNow. We'll be right back after this message.